anything to do with John Carmack, it just it, I get very very excited. This is a this is a much older post that just somehow came across my desk. Damn it, came across my desk. Anyways, so okay, Carmack's code at the time was kind of amazing, in the most complimentary way possible. I call Carmack a coding insect. Like how a bee knows how to build a hive. Carmack codes with a complete picture in his head of what parts he needs to make a whole. Back then, with every generation game engine, he'd start over from scratch. I really mean from scratch. Not Nambly Pamby. Nambly Pamby, I rewrote some of the code and called it scratch. Since his engines ran on a variety of machines and OSs, he wrote every damn function himself. Carmack needs to log something. Carmack writes a logging function. New generation of engine, new logging function. Everything from scratch. A lot of respect on that one. A lot of respect. It built different too. I, I do think there's a lot of wisdom in this. And I do mean that in the sense that if you are trying to build some, especially, I mean, also, can we be fair? Back then, you know, like Doom 1 days, like 19, whatever, 1991. Was that Doom 191? Um, I'm not exactly sure how much free stuff he had access to. But also, I mean, they really were measuring everything. Like, the cycles were, like, exceptionally important. And so one could imagine the importance of doing this was also super important. So it's like, you make a game engine, you felt and saw all the things that were wrong with it, you generally know how to make it better, and, it, and so just do another one, and then do another one. Because I was young, super anal, and wasn't on SSRIs back then... <laughs> It's a crazy statement to make. Uh, I was uh, I once asked Carmack why he didn't use libraries for common functions that he could share between uh, engine revisions. Carmack's a super nice guy, but on this one uh, on this one instance, he used the "Well, I think my methods work pretty well" defense. I never suggested coding style changes again. I mean, is anyone going to argue that? Shut the fuck up in Carmack. I mean, but that's the thing is like, is anyone going to argue that one? The things he produced were really good. And because it works is a fine answer. There's a lot of correlations we can take into like modernity. And you could write a simple little table function to write some table stuff. And maybe it works. And maybe it like works, but not on all cases. And it is what it is. And it's like 50 lines of code. Or you can just go NPM install and get whatever, or cargo add, or, you know, pip install, whatever, whatever your soup does jour, go get, right? You go and you could do, just go get it. And then you could just write it down. I mean, is there any benefit for you doing those things? I don't know. Is there? I mean, me personally, I enjoy making my own things. Like I actually really in, in, enjoy it. I have control. I, yeah, exactly. Code girl. I get, I get to be the one in con control. I get to be the one that kind of makes the calls and those control, those points of control are either a technical advantage or they become a um a liability but downloading someone else's library is not like people are, keep saying time benefit saving time maybe have i mean how many times have you used a library and then all of a sudden it just like it's not how you view the world it's how they view the world and there's just these differences and then all of a sudden now you're spending time trying to do something like just because there's something that exists doesn't mean it's not also a liability right Liabilities exist, but there is like a lot to be learned here. I do think that if you're building a side project, you should consider taking this on. Like I, I for me, uh, something I really, really appreciated is that I made uh, a ASCII rendering terminal game that was a tower defense in Zig last year. And when I made it, I didn't use any terminal coloring or terminal clearing or end curses or anything like that. Instead, I wrote my own rendering my own coloring, my own clearing. I just wrote them all down. It ended up being, I think, like 200 lines of code. Yeah, some of it wasn't that good. I think I could have done a little bit better now that I've done it once. But it was it was fairly trivial to do. And now I'm like, ah, this feels great. <laughs> like, I now know what I'm doing. And now I have my own rendering, and I had my own coloring, and I had all my stuff. And now I could make the renderer the way I wanted it to. And it was very, it was just pretty much trivial. Anyways, but really, for him, it made no sense to share code because, like a bee, it was just as fast to write new code. The template was in, hand, uh, in his head. He types really fast. Why bother importing something? Um, I know people hate this idea. Okay, I know people hate this. Here comes my, most, my, my, my least popular take. Are you guys ready? Learn to type well. It's not hard. Sit down, go on monkey type every day for 30 minutes, 
And if you're typing at like 50 words a minute, just just get up to 80. Get up to 90. You don't hey, you don't need to be 120. You don't need to be 150. Just type well, okay? Not asking for a lot. Trust me, I'm telling you how much mental space you will relieve yourself if you don't have to look at your keyboard because you have to think. Like your brain still has to consider and think and process images while you're coding. You can just free up that entire thing and then just your spine does it all. You barely even do anything. It just like flows out of you, okay? I just think it gives you more opportunity to use your brain on the problem you're solving than use your brain on trying to figure out what letters you want to type. I think it's okay to type 80 or 90 words a minute. I don't think you need to be, I don't think you need to be the fastest person in the universe. No one's saying that. There you go. But isn't it like, I mean, this is kind of an amazing statement to make. This guy literally is defending typing speed as a reason why he doesn't even have to share libraries is because the time it would take for him to go and get whatever function or thing he needs, he could actually whip it up and see. Who said 80 to 90 is not enough? Who said 80 to 90? Well, I mean, people always think like you got to get like, you got to become like the fastest person ever. I use two fingers. Yeah, I, I think that you have to spend a lot of mental effort in doing that. I just think I, I'm just convinced of it. I think you just have to spend a lot of mental effort that you don't actually want. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to spend a lot of mental effort, like thinking about it all, right? I want to spend none. I don't even, I don't even want to think. Like, I just, I, I want to go, I want to say this word and that word comes out. I want this word, I want this line to be deleted. The line is just deleted because I have so much muscle memory put into me that I don't think about my actions, right? I think that when you have to think about what you want to do as opposed to th- opposed to thinking about the thing itself, that's just time spent away from the problem. And like, you totally get this. Like imagine, imagine if you played any sort of sport, right? The first few times you play like any racket sport, I think racket sports are a great example of this because a lot of people have at least swung like a ping pong paddle or a racquetball or tennis. When you're first doing it, you actually are like thinking about the position of the paddle. And once you get past a certain point, you stop thinking about the paddle and you're thinking about your body and movement and how, how to next best position yourself. That's like, those are vastly two different operation. That means once you get past point A, you become actually good at the thing because you don't have to spend as much mental effort thinking about this thing. You become good enough where that is just no longer a thing. You're only thinking about the problem itself. I was really into uh, table tennis. Okay. I was really into table tennis. Yeah, you get a higher gear. You get a whole new, like, you change the game. Uh, let's say I don't, let's say I don't, let's say don't take this to mean his code was spaghetti. It was actually some of the easiest to understand code I've ever worked with. It has almost, let's see, it has an almost indescribable quality of obviousness. Like, you know, when a really good teacher explains something, it seems obvious. That's what his code was like. I mean, of course, there's a loop where uh, you service the pending events and call refresh on the UI layer. I do like that. This is most certainly the most obvious kind of statement here that this means he just didn't abstract into the universe. Because think about how many different ways there are to do this and how many times you like come across code where you have to jump like six layers to figure out how something is going. Instead, it's just like, here's the function that detaches and calls out and sends out events and then it calls refresh. It's not like, oh, but you might have like a refresh layer factory config that needs to produce out a confactory or a config to be able to then call into this thing to be able to produce out the right, dude, it's just like, stop, stop, stop. Maybe just the thing is fine enough. And sometimes, hey, sometimes a little bit of abstraction can be nice. It happens. It happens from time to time. I think we can all agree there is that one time where you throw in a little bit of an abstraction, just a tiny bit, just a simple interface, and it's nice. Tell this to Uncle Bob. You know, Uncle Bob gets a bad rap for a lot of the stuff he does. He even says that people reach for uh, abstractions too fast. Like, he, he, is, he is right about that, right? He, he talks about it. Like, we, I had him on my, I've already had him on my show, and he's already explicitly stated that he thinks people reach for abstractions too fast. Like, that's a good thing. Like, that's a normal thing. You should not reach for abstractions too fast. Other things that I'll never be able to get, like, behind him on. Uh, like, uh, I think TDD is, I, I'm just not a TDD guy. It's just not for me. Like, I'm just not going to love TDD. I do like writing tests when it, it makes sense, but I'm not, um, you know, I'm not really fully into it all the time. Anyway, so I love this. I hope one day that people say this about the things I write. And I hope that one day people say this about what you write. That when you write code, it's awesome. It's easy to understand. And even the complicated things that when you understand the point of what it's doing, it becomes easy to understand. Like, this is, this is highest praise when it comes to coding. Awesome. Love John Carmack. Um, I never met the guy. Seems like a really nice guy. Seems like somebody I would love to just talk to. Uh, just because, you know, he's like a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a hero. You know what I mean? The name. 
is the Primogen.